that when you were uh, before you st- well, when you were younger, mm-hmm. did you ever used to read science fiction magazines, books, or anything? No, I didn't. I was, I was never a kind of particular science fiction fan as a no. child or, or as a young you man. What, what did you used to read when you were uh, young? Uh, mainly James Bond books. Yeah. James Fleming books. Yeah. You used to go and see the films, did you? Yeah. yeah. What kind of films apart from that? Well, I've always been a great fan of American musicals. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a fairly uh, varied taste in cinema anyway. I mean, I always yeah. have had. But... Um, Particularly those old um, Hollywood musicals yeah. like Gold Diggers of 1934 and yeah. Uh, yeah. great favourites. Yeah, so no particular preference? No, certainly not a great preference for science fiction. No. Um, well, how exactly did you become started in television? Well, I was working in the theatre um, initially as an actor combined with stage management duties. Yeah. And um, I was coming to the end of a repertory season in Cheltenham. I'd been trying for many years to get into the BBC in any kind of uh, job at all, really. Mm -hmm. And um, out of the blue, I was suddenly invited to come down for an exploratory interview. And by the time the interview was fixed and I'd come down and talk to them, there were actually two jobs. So I went out of the interview with them offering me a four-month contract in either Glasgow or London. And I took London. Yes, first. It was quite easy. Well, I mean, it wasn't easy because, as I say, I'd spent so many years trying to get an interview, trying to mm, yeah. get a start, but yes. uh, certainly having got the interview, it seemed quite easy to get in. Yeah. Um, I think you were also involved in Noel Baker story, Invisible Enemy. Yes. Um, what extent were you involved in that? I was production unit manager, as we were. Yeah. So what, what does that mean, exactly? It's basically general advisor to the producer. Yeah. Uh, on organisational and financial yeah. matters. So did you get? You didn't get to see much of the actual studio. Oh yeah, did you, I went did to you all the studio. Yeah. 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 I mean, my production associate, which is the new name for the job, mm. uh, she comes along to all my recordings anyway. So you were quite. You you had experience then. Mm. From the studio, yeah. Um, you weren't. You didn't have anything to do with the introduction of K9, did you? I was asked for my opinion by yeah. Graham. And um, like many other people, I said that I thought it had tremendous potential yes. and uh, it should stay. Yes. Um, but as I say, that's by no means the only one saying that. No, quite. No. Um, so, did you find it at all difficult getting the job of producer? You know, I mean, did you find it difficult sort of coming, because you were coming sort of almost new to the programme? Did that experience help you? Or was it well, I don't think I was coming new. I mean, I'd no. done three years solidly on the show. Yes. As production unit manager. Yeah, I suppose so, yes. Um, yeah, once was again... It, was it difficult, you know, full-time sort of producing? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a terribly demanding show. It's the most demanding one that the BBC produces, in my opinion. Do you still, do you still think it is? Yes. Most demanding, yeah. yeah. Um, but having wanted to produce and let that be known to my head of department for many years, mm. uh, the strange thing was that when it happened, it happened out of the blue, and I was just sent for and asked, would you like to take over Doctor Who as Graham's leaving? Yeah, because do you, are cre- all creatures great and small, are you the producer, or no. you the director? No, I was no. production unit manager oh. on that as well. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to be director? Uh, yes, I've uh, toyed several times with doing the two-parter, mm. and some things always come up each year to prevent me. The first year... I think it was the first year I did. No, the first year that we didn't have a two-parter, I don't think. What, the 18th season? Yes. Yeah. The, the next year, I was going to do Black Orchid. Oh, yes. And we got K9 and Company off the ground, which was going to happen at the same time, so mm. I had to uh, decide against that. Yes. Last year, I was planning on doing King's Demon, and yes. then this pantomime came up. Oh, I see. What about and this year... Um, we did the two-parter much earlier in the year, which is a kind of busier time for us mm. anyway. So you couldn't get a chance no. to do it then? No, right, well, moving on to something else. Um, Doc 2 Monthly. Mm-hmm. Um, what exactly does advisor for it mean? It's well, advisor, John Nathan Turner, I, s- I have a regular meeting with um, the contributing writer. Richard Lambert. Richard Lambert. Yeah. Uh, and prior to him with Jeremy. Mm. And 
they ask my opinion of ideas they've got for interviews or profiles or what have you. And I obviously chip in my two pennies and yes. steer them towards people I think would be yes. more interesting or as interesting. I think the problem is with the monthly that um, the longer it goes on, the more difficult it is mm -hmm. to find material to fill the covers. Do you, do you think it's getting better or gradual decline of what? I don't. I think. I don't think it's getting. Uh, it I thought it was having a bit of a shake-up when they, when Richard Landon started, but it seems to be getting. Yes, I think inevitably any more. change. Um, yeah, same with Doctor Who be. changing actors, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you mind if I go through seasons? No, just fine. Just let me finish each question there sorry. before you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Because that's the best I've done. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Which was your Favourite story, got to ask this, of the 18th season. What was the 18th season? Was that Tom's last? Yes. Um, I think in terms of the story content and style, I very much liked Keeper of Trarkin. Yes. And perhaps what do you think was the least satisfying story, satisfactory story? Um, I think what else was in that season. Um, and Megalos wasn't so. I didn't think it was too bad, but uh, that wasn't so. Yes, I think many people didn't like Megalos. I mean, in a way, it's a kind of traditional, yes. simplistic story, and yes. uh, I think there's a place for simplistic stories in the programme, providing they're not overdone. No. I don't really have an unfavourite. No. I wasn't wild about Warrior's Gate, but I don't know whether I'd no. say that was the worst. I didn't understand it, but I think it's very good. Um, did you get on well with, you know, Tom Baker and Oliver Ward? Yes, I did. I mean, I I'd worked with Tom for three years before yeah. I took over as producer, so we knew each other very well. And uh, similarly, Lala, not yeah. for that length of time, but yeah. I've known her ever since she came into the show. When was the first you knew they were going to get married? Um, they told me just before they announced it to the press. Yeah, so you weren't, you didn't um, really know about it before that then? Sort of no. Surprise, no. Um, I knew they were seeing each other, but I didn't know it, yeah. it was approaching yeah. marriage. Um, were you happy with the final slot? 5 you know, early on? No, I didn't like it being that early. No, so that's why you changed it for the next season? Well, uh, producers don't dictate the time slot. No. Uh, that's, that's the decision of the controller of each channel. And uh, I was asked for my opinion on a move to a bi-weekly slot. No matter what I said, I feel absolutely sure it would have happened yeah. anyway. But I said that I thought at that particular time um, it was the best thing that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. That early slot, you know, is, is not good. People are not home from their Saturday jobs. No. People who have been to a football match haven't got home either. Yeah. You know, it's just that little bit too early. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Onto the Godless, um, the, in the flashback sequence at the end, mm -hmm. was that in Big Mead's original script? Do you know, I can't remember. I have a uh, feeling it wasn't. So you I sort can't of, remember. did you add that, do you think? Yeah. Yes. Was it difficult to come by all the clips and things? Uh, yes, hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Looking through each... Mm. Yeah. I mean, w w when I set off, I felt sure that um, it would be quite easy to mm. find a a frontal shot, that would, would have been the ideal, the, the character looking straight to camera saying, Doctor, and it's surprising how few there are in what we call a static picture. There were plenty with the camera on the move. Yes. So it did take rather a long time. Yeah. Um, what, why did you actually scrap K-9? And what specific, I know it's been said before and you probably have to answer this question for me, but what were your main reason, what was your main reason for scrapping? The main reason was that I felt it distracted from the Doctor to such an extent it, it became a kind of, I mean it was a cutesy robot mm. and I think that Doctor Who being a pioneer in that it was the first show or even film to take on board as a kind of regular character a cutesy robot mm. should also be the first to get rid of it. Yeah. But it was being misused by writers in that they would put the Doctor in a certain uh, situation and uh, for a cliffhanger 
and next week the metal nuts would come charging in and blast open the door or knock out the soldier who was about to fire yeah. the gun at the doctor's head. Yeah. And um, I'd rather have a more ingenious way out. And I know some people will retaliate and say, well, why didn't you just tell the writer to um, change it? I mean, that's absolutely true, but you found that if you did that, the dog was hardly in it. Mm. Yeah. Which is why in some stories, you know, it was rested. And yeah, yeah. Well, do you think uh, Boris gave good stories who ended up and his life? I think so. I think it uh, made people certainly the younger viewers happy to think that the only way it could survive was to stay in East Bay. It was mm. a good enough way of getting rid of it. <laughs> um, yes, were you happy with the regeneration taking place in the last few seconds of the story? I mean, rather than having it as it's going to be in the story before the end, so that people can... Yes, I was quite, I was quite happy quite about it. Yeah. Um, it was about to be the longest gap the programme had had off the air. Yeah but I already knew that I had approval for the five doctors season. So I felt sure that that would keep the interest alive over that yeah. difficult period. Um, there's no such season this year, is there any no. special reason for that? The only reasons are financial and the, uh, each channel is limited to the number of programs that can be shown of more than two years old. Mm. And I think that um, a lot of the situation comedies that have been repeated during the summer have gobbled up the allocation. Mm. And there's simply not uh, the, the number of slots left no. without um, a court case. No, right. um, because we're only allowed, as I say, by yeah. equity to repeat a certain number. Um, was there any special reason for repeating the previous but one season, rather than usually just the previous season? I just thought it was too close. With a, with a January through March transmission, uh, I think repeats in, what were they, August or July, I to be the stuff that was four months old. Yeah, would you know not make much sense? No. I thought it was worth getting back yeah. one more year. I'm glad to see them on it. Mm. This is good. Yeah, on to the 19th season. Um, again, what you, do you think were your best or worst, you know, best or least favourite stories of that season? Um, I liked Black Orchid. Mm. That's what made a refreshing change. It was the kind of frivolity of it, which I enjoy. Yeah. Um, Earthshock, obviously. Mm. I, once again, I don't really have a totally no. unfavourite. No. Um, yes, how quickly do you think Peter s Peter Davidson settled down in the run? Quite and quickly. I think quicker than some other doctors. Yeah, because well, you, you worked probably quite closely, didn't you? Yes. So you would have known if you'd settled down. Yes, I, I think that um, for quite a while, for quite a few stories, you know, you, the actor is kind of still finding ways in which his doctor would react to certain situations. And after doing two or three, because inevitably there's a repetition of situation, you can kind of relax on it and say, well, that's, that's my doctor now, and yeah. we can just charge forward and maybe do something different occasionally. Yeah. But it took him two or three stories, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you if you could explain a few of the religious meanings of kinder. Oh. But um, it's been done before, so if you don't want to. What I specifically? Mean, well, um, perhaps the snake. Was that had any, Did that have any particular... Do you know, I can't, I, I'm sure it did, but I can't mm -hmm. remember. You'd have to ask Christopher snake. Bailey. Yes, I think that'd be better. I think, yes, I think uh, there was... Uh, Allusions to the Garden of Eden, hence the throwing down of apples yes. and the serpent. And yes. Do you think that story worked? Kinder? Yeah. 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 I think it's, I mean, Christopher is a marvellous writer. He writes um, very full characters for, for the guest characters and very interesting, complicated stories, um, slightly wordy. And I think that, once again, there should be a place for that kind of oddball, if you like, story in each season. Yeah. Um, they say that there are only seven drama plots in, in uh, theatre, yeah. and we do seven stories a year. So inevitably, uh, you know, one's got to ring the changes, and I think to have the odd, oddball story. Yeah. 
the odd historical worm, yeah. the pacey worm. You know, you've got to kind of vary it. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you you don't think then that black horses was just kind of vehicle for Peter Davison? I mean, it certainly wasn't intended that way. No. I mean, how could it be a vehicle? Well, just something to, to sort of get people to look at him more than anything else. What do you think that really mattered if that was what it was? I mean, I don't, I don't, if it was, I don't think it achieved it. No. I mean, it was a Nissan story, really. I mean, obviously, you said, really. said before that you liked it, so... Yeah. I mean, it was a Nissan story, really. It was yes, I suppose In so. fact, the Doctor didn't do a great deal in episode one. No. no. Except walk along the corridor. Yeah. Um... Yes, did you enjoy making Earthshock? Yes. Mm. Tremendous challenge um, to do 300 and odd scenes in six studio days. Is that how long it took? Yeah, six. and uh, I think one day on location. And um, a tremendous challenge, which meant everybody had to work flat out from first thing in the morning to last thing at night. And I think, you know, it was hugely successful. Yeah. But it was a gruelling ultra grueling studio session. Do you have a look at the old, any old videos? Oh yes, I mean there's, there's the library behind me. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to bring anybody back, we look through the tapes. Yeah. Um, were you happy with Time Flight ending the season? Yes. Um, I think anything that followed Earthshock was bound to yeah. be viewed as an anticlimax. Mm. Um, but I, I didn't want to go out on the peak of the Cybermen, but losing Agric. Right. You know, you can't go on a total downward. We went out with the, the girl being left behind, mm. which was deliberate, you know, because uh, we wanted that kind of half emotive thing. Mm. She was all right. She'd been whinging about getting back to her own time. I don't think you could have ended it on a death. No. Um, okay, 20th season. Again, mm. do you have any particular favourite story of that? That's the one that's just gone out, is it? Yes. I'm very confused with the numbers. <laughs> and then, of course, we're always working one ahead. Yes. Um, I liked Ark, mm. Mordrin, Enlightenment. Those are your three sort of top. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also like King's Demon, yeah. um, but, but I think that that's been viewed in an unfair light because it was never intended to be the end of the season. No. And I think had it had a story to follow it, it would have been regarded higher than in fact it has. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you weren't particularly happy then with that ending season? No, no. but there was nothing I could do about it. No. Um, I'm going to ask you a question here, you may not know it, but I know the answer. It was in Mordin Undead. Mm -hmm. um, the scene, the headmaster turns into the Black Guardian. Yeah. Was he supposed to be the Black Guardian all along? No. Or, do, or was it just that for that moment? Just for that scene. Right. Um, I think somebody asked me to ask you that. Um, was did was um, Nicholas Court Courtney able to get back into his role easily? Yeah. 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 Like a duck to water. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mordin again. Um, are you going to give us any um, clues to who the mysterious person was who was quoted in Mordrin and Dead as Tello's solicitor? He said that oh, the solicitor in London is a very strange fellow. Mm -hmm. and that was all that was said. Was there any spe special significance as well? Oh, yeah. You're not going to say Stay anything. tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Will that be revealed in the next season? Well, I'm not saying whether it's going to be revealed. When, but it will be revealed eventually. Same as Tello's home planet. Yes, that will be revealed. Five doctors. No. No. So season twenty-one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was apparently I've heard a rumor. Rumors. Um. Was Terminus supposed to have something to do with Warrior's Gate? No. In Gamma's original sort of ideas, nothing to do with that at all. No. I heard somewhere that it was supposed to have the Farrells in it. Yeah. What? Rubbish. Right. Um, yes. Now on to the future of Congress. Um, what was the specific reason for changing Davison, or going to change Davison, the penultimate story? 
Because I have no guarantee at this time that there'll be a Five Faces season next year, I would not want to, to have nine months off the air waiting for the new Doctor to speak. Um, why exactly did you choose Colin Baker? Is there any specific reason? Well, I, uh, you mean apart from the obvious, well, he's a bloody good actor and he's yeah. been around for a long time and so on. Right. Um, he has, uh, perhaps so far in his career, been a, a very successful supporting actor. And I think he's a supporting actor who has the potential to be a leading actor. He did one story for us uh, last year, mm -hmm. and he was a great company member, and he became quite friendly with one of my staff who got married, and she invited all the Who crowd to her wedding reception. Sorry, I think. Mm -hmm. and we all went down and had champagne and smoked salmon on the lawn. And the Who crowd inevitably stuck fairly well together. And I remember Colin um, not dominating the conversation, but entertaining mm. the group hugely. Yeah. And I thought then, you know, he really is a, a personality, and it's a personality that perhaps hasn't yet totally emerged. And um, obviously at that time I wasn't looking for a doctor, but he just sort of lodged in my brain. Yeah. So that the minute Peter did tell me that he wanted to leave, um, I thought of him. What, you didn't have any other people? No. Just, yeah. Brian Blessed was never considered. Right. I've never met Brian Blessed, uh, although I much admire his work. Yeah. What, is it off the cuff? What, do, you, do you think he would be a good doctor? Co uh, Brian? Mm. Um, he's not uh, he, not my idea of the doctor, right. but I'm sure he'd, he'd, you know, I'm sure he'd be super if given the chance, but he, he to me, is not instantly Doctor Who material, no. in my opinion. Um, you, could you I'd love him to come and play a villain sometime. Mm, that'd be quite good, yeah. Um, do you, are you going to give me any um, clue as to how Baker's, Con Baker's character would be, turn out to be? Well, only in the very vaguest way, because we're still talking about it. So you don't know yourself, then? Not totally. I, I do know that I want him to be to have a sharp-edged wit, a kind of aggressive wit. Yes. Um, obviously, he's still going to remain eccentric yeah. and slightly whimsy. Um, but it's that sharp-edged thing I want to get yeah. into the character. You're not going to change his features in any way? Do you mean makeup-wise? Mm. No, no plans to. Um, you don't, um, is what, to what extent have you changed the TARDIS console that you were going to redo it, update it. I think you'll have to wait for the special for that. Yeah. It'll be revealed in the special. Yeah. Um, Vastly different. I don't know which way to take that. Um, what, to what it's the same kind of question, have you redesigned the Daleks to any great extent? No. Not at all, really? No, hardly at all. The odd uh, little yeah. bit and piece, but nothing substantial. Yeah. Um, for the last story, have you named the last story? Um, I've named it in the Radio Times special. Which I've seen but haven't got yet. Yes, but I'm not, um, I'd rather not reiterate it, put it like that, because I may change my mind. Okay. Um, will there be a new title sequence for that with, uh... Well, I couldn't put Peter's up. No, I suppose not a silly question, but I mean, a totally new one. I don't, I don't know, I've got a meeting next week to discuss that. So... Haven't decided yet. You haven't decided there was. It's not going to be a totally new one for the season twenty-one. Right. Whatever we use for the last story, we'll use for next year as well. I see. Um, is the Warriors of the Deep story in any way a tribute to Malcolm Park? In what way a tribute? In perhaps a tribute in its content. Like its content being. Well, um, you know, like perhaps some monsters turn up. Well, I mean, yes, once again, in the, in the Radio Times special, I've revealed that the Silurians and the Sea Devils are there. I didn't want to say that. Yeah. No. Is, that any is that any way a tribute to him? No. You said no. it didn't. I mean, it's not meant, I don't mean that to sound callous. I mean, 
we just decided to bring them back, and it's not uh, we're not dedicating the story to no, anything like that. Yeah. Um, right. Right. I could ask you is if the master's getting killed off. What would you say to that? Uh, well, he's been apparently been killed off so many times, or disposed <laughs> of so many times. Killed off, sort of forever, like. I'd rather not go into that. Right. Um, well, to the Long Week Convention, um, did you enjoy yourself there? I mean, was it... <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, it's not enjoyable to um, see people who can't get in. Right. And it's not enjoyable to see queues of people standing in line and hardly moving over a period of an hour. So from that point of view, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I think it's quite easy for people to say, oh, BBC Enterprises should have known how many thousands would turn up. It's an impossible thing to, um, to judge. I think perhaps looking back, it would have been better if they'd said pre-registrations only, no tickets on the day because then they would have been able to kind of put a halt to it and say, right, that's as many as the grounds can stand. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sorry that we did it. I mean, in anniversary year, uh, there should be some kind of celebration. And uh, I think for those who managed to, to get round, even if it took them all day to see a panel and see the displays and so on, I think it was worthwhile. Yeah. I appreciate the inconvenience of people and the discomfort and uh, simply the lack of space. But yeah. uh, so I don't regret doing it. I just wish we could do it all again, bearing in mind what we know now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you, you appear to look quite relaxed, you see, when all seemingly was sort of chaos around you. Were you so relaxed? No, you, you looked to be quite you know, in no, charge no. of the situation. I, I really can't remember. I, I just remember feeling terribly tense throughout the whole thing, yeah. thinking of these poor people. Yeah. Um, if a new producer came to the show, mm -hmm. okay, are you, you're staying on until the end of season 22? Mm -hmm. Till March 85 at the moment. Yeah. So say if a new producer came after that, would you act as an executive producer for that season? I don't know. I really you don't know. It very much depends on whether my projects, because I'm working on other projects at the moment, mm -hmm. If they were accepted by the controller and went into production, yeah. um, it would depend on A, whether I was asked to um, supervise, B, whether it would, would be a producer who's already here, who knew something about the program, or at least something about the BBC. I guess if it was somebody who hadn't worked for the corporation before, who was coming in to do it, yeah. they might ask me. Yeah. But in a way, that's almost an impossible question to answer, because yeah. there's so many imponderables yeah. Um, can I ask you what you thought of Scholars? But if you haven't seen it. I'm sure I've read it. Yeah. I'm Good. sure I enjoyed yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the pile of fan magazines up there. I do wade through them all. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, um, th th will the five doctors be, sh be shown as near as the 23rd of November as possible? Yes, we've asked. We've asked. Uh, that it be shown on the 23rd, so but we don't yet know. No, it's a pity if it, if it isn't. Like that. Um, say um, I wanted to submit a story for Doctor Who. How would one go about doing that? It, it, basically, we ask for a two or three page story outline, yeah. no more. Yeah. Just outlining the basic yeah. story. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is the characters sort of changing all the time. Mm. Um, so I suppose there's a risk of your story being dated quite quickly. Yes, but I mean, the stuff comes in for uh, to us with Adric and Nyssa in it. I mean, we don't worry about that. We don't worry if the companions have changed. Well, if, if the story's good enough, you still might use it and change the characters. Yeah, because we, we you're only talking about a two or three page document. Yes. You know, which is quite easy to. And then if, and then if it's you think it's good enough, then you'll ask them to. If we, if we like the initial story, we usually invite the writer in, kick it around for half a day, and then commission uh, what we call a scene breakdown, which is uh, 
a description of what will happen in each scene in each episode and then we kick that around some more and then we commission the script if we like it yeah but we are very well commissioned at the moment yeah so most of next what about next season's one already well that's season 21 yeah that's what about season 22 no that's what i mean 22 oh right this season's fully scripted oh yeah and next season mainly yeah. you've just you finished all the filming for this season no season 21 so which stories have yet to be sort of completed the last two all the rest are in the can uh, uh, no but planet of fire we're, we're in the studio tomorrow and again in a fortnight's time, but we've done the location work. Yeah. Okay. In Lanzarote. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's all I've got. Anyway. So all right. Thanks Good. a lot. Yeah. Pleasure.